Welcome to Pop-Up Perspective with Proficient. There are always many choices to be made when deciding on a development platform, as well as a coding model. There are competing needs of developers, marketers, and of course, end users to consider. When you have a highly interactive site with dynamic content, a headless approach with a single page application could be the way to go. There are several advantages that a headless approach can provide. These include, it enables implementation of content-focused single page applications with dynamic pages, layouts, and components delivers user experience achievable with SPAs, such as no page reload. It allows for content and asset reuse. It provides omni-channel delivery. It's supported by Adobe tools and libraries. It supports a separation of concern from backend and front-end development and can simplify hiring. Some of the downsides includes SSR setup is required, front-end devs will still have to consider AEM editing, and Adobe only supports Angular and React for SPAs. In this video, we are going to demo two different approaches to headless with AEM using single page applications or SPAs. And then we are going to discuss when each approach is good and not as good. We are going to look at the approaches from a high level so that decision makers with some technical understanding can choose what is best for their scenario, but we won't be doing a deep technical dive into the implementation details. When choosing a platform for your SPA, you can use Adobe's App Builder or some other SPA platform running Node.js for your React app. Let's briefly cover why you might consider using Adobe's App Builder serverless platform. If you're extending and integrating with Adobe solutions, App Builder is a great choice since it provides support for Adobe authentication, access control, publishing, and consuming custom events, storing data, CI CD pipelines, etc., all within the context of your organization in the Adobe Experience Cloud as the execution environment. This means that your authenticated users are already within the same context when moving between Adobe solutions and custom apps with consistent access control using the same user and group permissions. Because this is running within Adobe's cloud, there's no infrastructure to manage. Auto scaling is provided as well as routing traffic to the closest region. Having the integration with Adobe solutions and services results in more functionality out of the box, thus requiring less code. Finally, having all the above ultimately saves time as well. Our first approach happens to use App Builder, and our second approach is just running in a Node.js server locally. We recreated the same application in both cases. The application we created to demo these different approaches is called My Garage. The app allows you to switch to a persona, muscle car, economy car, truck guru, and luxury car, and the selected persona's garage of vehicles is displayed. The app also provides the ability to add a vehicle to the current person's garage based on the VIN. The first approach we'll consider is a standalone spa with AEM providing content. Again, in this case, we have used Adobe's App Builder to create the My Garage app. So in this application, all of the, the images as well as the content here, so these are uh, the vehicle data is a content fragment. Obviously the images are assets in the dam, uh, and these are uh, all provided from AEM. If we come into this AEM dam, to these content fragments, we can edit this content fragment we see here. So on the screen there, it said sports car before. We'll just change to sporty car. Save. Come back here. And you see it still says sports cars. We can refresh. We can also switch persona. So now we see economy car. We can switch back, back to sporty car. The second approach is using AEM's remote spot editor to provide areas with in-context editing and layout control. In this case, we are just running a React application in a local Node.js instance that has included some Adobe libraries and placeholder code for integrating Adobe's AEM core components via remote spa editor. So again, same application, uh, you know, the images and the content, you know, the, the vehicle data is from content fragment, all from AEM. Actually, if we refresh this, you'll see this switch to sporty car, it's coming from the same AEM instance. And again, uh, you know, we can switch personas. And here we have the remote spa editor where we can do the in-context editing. How this is configured is in the page properties. There's a spa tab. And you can see here, here's the host URL. In our case, we're just running localhost for this demo. In a real scenario, uh, obviously it would be a real-time URL. So what we can do is we can edit these core components. Here's a title component. We refresh here. Can see that's the little exclamation point is added now. We've got a layout container here. 
uh, we can drag a component in there. So let's put an image component in there, put an image in the in image component. And then again, we can refresh and see that's reflected right away. We also have layout controls. Maybe we want to make this a little bit narrower. And again, you see that reflected right here. Now that we've shown two approaches for integrating AEM with a SPA, let's discuss when each approach is good and not as good. For the first approach of a standalone SPA with AEM providing content, it's good when content management needs are basic, the SPA application is highly interactive and less content-centric, content doesn't change that often, authoring teams are less mature, development teams are responsible for managing content, development teams don't have AEM development expertise, and content is dynamic. It's not as good when content needs are advanced, SPA application is less interactive and more content rich, and content changes are frequent. For the second approach, using AEM's remote SPA editor, it's good when content management needs are more advanced, the SPA application is highly intera interactive and more content-centric, content changes are more frequent, authoring teams control content publication, development teams don't have AEM development expertise, you need to support routing in your SPA, and again, content is dynamic. It's not as good when you want to use the Context Hub and AEM's built-in targeting feature is disabled. Adobe Target is, however, supported. In summary, the biggest difference between a SPA consuming content from AEM and using AEM Remote SPA Editor is that AEM Remote SPA Editor provides the possibility for some in-context editing. As we stated previously, this will require the inclusion of Adobe libraries and some placeholder code for when any core components can be added in the Remote SPA Editor. Obviously, there are several considerations when choosing the right approach for your application, and there's no right answer for every situation. Using the information we've shared here can help you decide the approach that makes the most sense in your particular scenario. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Pop-Up Perspective with Proficient.